the old rotary cutter, the International World Agritech IM502 that I had was finally pretty beat up. It was actually 25 years old. So I finally decided it was time to get a new one. I wanna go over what we got. It's the Woods BB6030. I just wanna point out some of the features on it. It's a premium rotary cutter as opposed to a standard duty cutter like the old International. And so with this video, I just want to show you some of the features and some of the differences between the Woods, which is a premium cutter, and then the standard duty cutter that I had before. So this is the Woods BB6030. This is their brush bull, their premium line of rotary cutters. They do have a sort of standard light duty line of rotary cutters as well. And this thing, quite frankly, is a beast. So one of the first things that I noticed about it is just how substantial the mounts are for the three point. I also really like that this is a slide through pin. This makes this rather easy to mount on the tractor because I can just back up. I get um, that link arm over there on the other side in and pinned. I can adjust the level on this one really easily so that I can line up and then I just slip the pins in, good to go. Up here at the top link, again, super beefy. I mean, this steel is like 3 eighths of an inch thick here. Really, really robust hinge, a lot of movement here that can be accommodated with this setup. This red piece here is actually a hanger for the PTO shaft. So it pins up here out of the way when you're using the cutter, but if you take the cutter off the tractor, you can swing this down. It'll hook right underneath there and hold that shaft up. Nice shielding here around the slip clutch. This comes standard with slip clutch protection for the drive line, which is nice. And the standard model has a rubber shielding up here at the front of the cutter. And then it's got a metal band shielding here in the back. A chain guard is an option. Next thing that's really nice with this is these bolt-on skids. So right now the cutter is actually setting all the way down on the ground, makes this a little hard to see. But this bolt-on skid actually sticks out a nice couple inches. Again, it's about a quarter inch thick steel, completely replaceable, which is a nice thing. And it also extends pretty far back down the side of the cutter, so it makes a nice bumper. Coming up top, this is a nice robust gearbox. This here is actually a dipstick for checking the gear oil level, which is a really nice feature, makes it nice and easy to check the oil levels. You can see the marks on it. A lot of gearboxes just have a plug where you pull the plug and if you're filled up to the level of the plug, it, it's full. But that's a lot harder to work with than just an easy dipstick that's simple to unscrew. Coming back behind it, this cover plate opens up and gives you access to the top of the stump jumper for being able to change out the blades. Woods actually has a system where instead of having a very, very large nut at super high torque on the pin, they have just a three quarter inch and that has a, a change mechanism that's a little bit easier to work with than many traditional cutters. Coming back by the tail wheel, you can see that the frame is nicely reinforced with this steel, nice and strong. And then the steel on the tail wheel itself, the forks here, nice quarter to three eighths inch thick steel. So nice and heavy all around the construction of the rotary cutter itself you'll notice it's a smooth top and that is super nice i've put a few hours on this already and it basically stays that clean so water is able to run right off the top and even back here where there's a little lip there's actually i don't know if i can show you there's actually a little drain hole right there which lets water down through so nothing can pool on this the structure is this tubular steel, which is primarily underneath. So really stout and strong to give this nice smooth top. Now Woods rates this cutter for 25 PTO horsepower as a minimum. This Ford 1700 tractor puts out 23 PTO horsepower, or at least it did when it's new. I may have lost some in the 40 plus years old that it is. 
but it absolutely handles this cutter fine. That's one thing I was a little bit nervous about purchasing this. However, I had seen some videos on YouTube where someone was running this behind a Kubota L2501, which has even less PTO horsepower than the 1700 does. So having run this now for a few hours, I've run it through grass that is waist high. I can drive through that going 2.2 to 2.8 miles an hour and it'll knock it down no problem. It only overtaxes the engine or lugs the engine if you're doing that and going up a hill. In shorter grass, I can easily go three and a half miles an hour on the tractor and actually the cut quality is appreciably better. To get a good cut quality in tall grass, I do have to drive at slower speeds. So let's take this Woods BB6030 back up by the barn, park it next to the old International IM502 and just take a look at the difference between this premium duty cutter and that standard or light duty cutter. Both five foot, both category one three point, but there are definitely some differences. So here is the Woods BB6030 next to the old International IM502 standard duty cutter. Things to notice right away, the framing on this all up top, no smooth top here. We had a storm last night come through. You can see the water pulled up there. That happens back there as well. Debris sits on top of this pretty easily. And that is one of the disadvantages with having the framing up top. The IM502 never had any shielding here at the rear. It may have been an option. I don't know. This cutter never had it. It also doesn't have any shielding up at the front. And as we look at this, you can see the substantial difference in the height of these two rotary cutters as well. Looking at the tear wheel fork here, not nearly as wide on the steel. So you can just see that steel is much wider. And the big reason that I finally gave up with this is because this is banged around a bunch. This is now bent such that this wheel can't rotate. In terms of the three point, this is the only pivot you have on the IM502 compared to the substantial pivot that you have over there on the woods. The A-frame here, this part is pretty substantial, but when you come down to the mount to the cutter, this steel is actually not as thick as this. And because this cutter has spent time mowing trails and kind of edging right up against trees, it does bang side to side. You can see this has bent here. You've got a little gusset there, but overall just nothing near as robust as you see right here. Looking at the skids on this, this is like eighth of an inch thick steel welded on. There's nothing sticking out beyond the edge of the cutter and that only comes back about six inches compared to the woods where you've got the big shield right on the outside and it runs all the way back more than halfway to the back of the cutter. Cut capacity is up to one inch in diameter cut capacity is up to two inches in diameter. So there is a significant difference here. The final thing to think about with rotary cutters, which is a big reason I went the premium route, is a lot of times you do back up into things, right? So if you've got trees and stuff and you wanna kinda of get under the trees, you might back your tractor in underneath and then you're pushing tall stuff over with the back of the cutter. This is nice and thick almost quarter inch steel back here on the back of this structure. Yes, you will bend, and I already did bend a little bit, this shielding if you don't have the chain shield, or at least you risk that, but this is really robust and strong. Whereas this, you know, is like an eighth inch steel or whatever, and when you push back into stuff, it's just not that stout. So something to keep in mind if you're gonna back into things. A standard duty cutter that you buy today will in essence be very, very much like this one from 25 years ago. And a cutter like that with sheer pin protection on the driveline in 2023 goes for a bare minimum price of around $2,000. 
if you put a slip clutch on there, now you're talking price $2,500, $2,600 plus for something like this without the shielding front, rear, and one inch cut capacity. A premium cutter like this Woods BB6030 is at least $1,000 more expensive than that. And in 2023, I paid $3,800 for this delivered. So there was a $100 delivery in there. I spent basically $3,700 on the cutter. It came all assembled. All I needed to do was adjust the tail wheel. So as you can see, when you step up to a premium duty cutter and pay the extra thousand to thirteen hundred dollars more, you are getting more with it. It's got shielding on the front and the back. It's got those replaceable skid shoes. It's a much heavier mount to the three point. The Woods actually has a thicker blade. It's a half inch thick by four inches wide compared to a half inch thick by three inches wide. So there's just more steel in it across the board and it is more robust. So you are getting what you pay for. All right, so that's an overview of what the Woods BB6030 looks like in comparison to an old beat up standard duty rotary cutter. Having seen the old IM502, I think you could see why I decided it was finally time to upgrade given the bend on the three point hitch mount and the tail wheel fork. The blade's also not in great shape on that cutter. But anyway, let's get back to work and do a little mowing. Just for reference, this grass was about a foot tall and I was driving about three and a half miles an hour, which is as fast as I ever go mowing to cut that down. And you get a, a pretty nice cut. I cut it from a foot down to about four inches. Over here, the tall sprigs that you see are up to my belt. Most of it's probably two feet-ish. And I was going over this, going about two point two miles an hour given the gear that I was in you can see the cut quality of course you leave a lot of material here and it's not going to be quite as even nonetheless it does a good job and the tractor handles it just fine yeah. 